A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. So this is what we will be taking a closer look at in this mat uh, material slash uh, Unreal Engine 5.1 tutorial. Uh, we will be looking at the translucent uh, material overlay option that we have available that can be used for example for outlines like you can see for the green character over here uh, but also for other effects like you see to the right you, you have a lot of options when it comes to this and uh, we will uh, go through setting up a simple material to get some kind of effect like this and also show how you can activate it on a character in runtime uh, through blueprints like this character is being done right now um, yeah that's it welcome back in this episode, we are going to be talking a little bit about translucent overlay materials. And this is something that I covered a little bit uh, previously when I was um, showing off the new features for 5.1. And uh, I will leave the documentation link for this in the description if you want to go there. But we're going to go through a little bit of what this uh, means and what this can be used for, for example. So, in here I have a project, I have a few different materials set up for some different characters. Uh, first thing to note is that an overlay material can be applied both to a skeletal mesh and to a static mesh. And how this works is, um, it will. what Unreal Engine will do is it will render the mesh twice to achieve this effect. Um, the benefit you get from this is that it is more convenient to, to get certain effects on characters now uh, than it was previously. Like for example here on the left I have something that is reminiscent to an outline material that you would previously do in a post-process material for example. Uh, now you don't need to do that, you can just apply it uh, in runtime if you want to uh, using this overlay material slot. Uh, how this works, if we look on the characters we can see that if we click on this one, uh, you have a few different categories here. If you go to rendering or you scroll down to it, you'll find that we have a rendering selection here. And if we open up the advanced tab, you can see that we have an overlay material grouping here. So you can also search for uh, overlay material uh, if you want to find it that way as well. Uh, so this is the slot that we'll be using the material. And that is essentially it. So from now, We'll just together create a simple material for this character in the middle and you'll see how we can go about creating one of these. Uh, it's not very hard. We are going to be creating a translucent material. You have a lot of options when it comes to creating materials because you can use a lot of different variations, techniques and use this for a lot of stuff. Not only for making outlines uh, to the left here, you can have other effects going on as well. Uh, making dissolves and, and stuff like that as well if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, so let's go into our folder here. I've created a tutorial folder and we're going to be creating a material together. So we'll go create a material. We'll call this M underscore overlay and we'll go into it. And what we'll do here is we will create a very simple material to start off with. Um, let's create something akin to this uh, outline material over here. So first off we're going to be creating a color so I'm going to be holding down three key and left clicking and we'll get a color node, a three vector one. And this one we will be using as our, our color for our outline. So to start off we could create something, I don't know, maybe something purple, like so. That will be our color. Uh, clicking on our material we're going to be changing it from opaque to uh, trans sorry, translucent blend mode. So we'll be hooking this up into the emissive. If we have it directly into the emissive now, this will be the, the color that we display on something. Uh, but we want to create something that is more uh, along the edges. And what I tend to do uh, for that is I tend to use the Fresnel node. So if we right click and type in Fresnel uh, properly, Fresnel, there we go. This is uh, our Fresnel function, and this one is driven by some scalar values. So let's create a few scalar values. We'll create, hold on, left key, left click twice. Now we created some values. Uh, now I'm going to be using some values just that I found were fairly interesting to use. So the first one will be four, 
and this one we will be using as our exponent and the second value will use something like minus 0 0.00001 or something and this will be our fraction like so and now we want to combine these two things and we'll do that by doing a multiply so we'll hold down our m key and left click and then we'll hook them together and then hook that up to our emissive color and now we're essentially getting something akin to what i was talking about we get this sort of edge shape here now this would be something that would be if we also hook it up into opacity you'll see that the dark uh, parts go away so it will uh, just color the edges uh, to demonstrate what this looks like we can actually apply it on our character so we'll go to our character and we'll make sure that it's selected over here then we'll drag it here I either drag it or select it uh, in here if we have it selected already and we'll see that we have a sort of, if I just select it, we have a sort of purple outline for it now. So that's that's one way you can go about doing that. Um, let's expand upon this a little bit by combining it with our other effect that we have over here. We have this sort of panning effect. Um, so let's create a effect for that. So we'll go and do a texture sample. Right click, and type in texture, and you'll get a texture sample. And we can have this driven by noise, so we can go and uh, choose a texture over here, and we can say noise, see if we find something that looks okay. I don't know, tiling noise seems good, it probably is uh, tiled so it's uh, seamless, that's probably pretty good. Uh, let's have it moving, so we'll right click and type in panner. This allows us to actually pan our texture if we want to. We can put in some speeds here, so 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, so it will just pan a little bit. Um, and from here, we don't really need to do all that much more. Uh, we want to combine it with the effect over here that we have. So what we can do is we can multiply and have this output be combined with this output. And then have that output be driving our... Uh, result over here and then we can also uh, take our rgba here as our opacity so that drives what effect or what colors are being uh, uh, translucent for this um, so yeah something like that maybe change the color to something a little bit more bright maybe some orangey like that and yeah so now we have something that's very basic uh, not super clear, but something to start from at least and for right now it just looks like this But we can enhance upon this further uh, For one thing we might want to make this a little bit more um, uh, Modular and easy to work with so we might want to make a material instance so we can right click on uh, this uh, uh, Exponent and we'll just call it exponent uh, like so now we have exposed it as a parameter for our material instances and over here we can right click and click convert this to parameter as well and um, we'll call this maybe i don't know fraction something like that we can right click on our color and we can make that uh, let's call it color that's straightforward uh, we could do the same for a texture sample right click uh, convert it to parameter and we can call this our noise texture or something like that so now we have a bunch of different parameters here that we can play around with. Uh, let's save it. And we'll open up our uh, content browser again and we'll create a right click and create a material instance. Now we have a material instance of this. We'll call it MI overlay. Uh, opening this up we can now alter these values if we wanted to we could for example go to the color and make it uh, pop a little bit more so we can take a red color and go from uh, one to maybe 50. it will give it a more colorful emissive burst and we can actually let's do it this way uh, let's put it back to one just for those of you that don't work with material instances that much uh, we'll check our character 
make sure that we have our material instance selected and we'll make use of that material instead. There shouldn't be a change because it looks the same. Um, then after that, we can actually change this value. So now if we put five, you can see that it's a little bit brighter over here. And if we put in 50, you can see that it's pretty bright over here. So this is one way and we can also change the exponents and the fract uh, fraction and the, the textures here if we wanted to as well. Let's even go even further. Let's go to 100. Um, so you have the ability to create these materials and apply them like overlays very simply now, like this. Um, now what I have here is I have three skeletal meshes. So we have just applied them directly, but we could also apply this in runtime if we wanted to. So uh, if we save this, put it over here. To the left here, we also have a blueprint of our, this is a third person character template. So we have a, uh, the Queen character as our default character, essentially. And we can open up our blueprint for that character and add some code for this. So let's add a, a keyboard, E key is what I tend to like to use. And we can see how we can actually change these materials on a character on the fly. Uh, let's have a flip flop so we can turn it off and on, like so. And yeah, let's uh, just uh, get our mesh. We need to get our skeletal mesh because that's who has the overlay material. Type in set overlay and you can see overlay material appears here. And we want to have two of these. So we'll copy paste it and put it over here. And we'll say run the first one and the second one like so. And then let's say we wanted to have the, the material over here for, for when it flips to A. We can right click, promote variable and we'll get a variable here. We can say that this is our overlay material. This will be of the type uh, material interface. So it will be able to handle both materials and material instances. And we'll compile and we'll find our material which was called uh, MI overlay. Uh, so MI overlay like so. And we have that hooked up. So now when we are pressing E key, it will go to A, it will set this material, which is set to be our overlay. And when we click again, it should go over here and it's setting it to nothing, which means it will be blanking out the material overlay. And now if we play and I press the E key, you can see that I start glowing like the character in the middle does and pressing E again will remove it. So that's how simple it is to make use of in runtime uh, just from blueprint code as well. So that's essentially going to be it. Um, I hope that this was useful. Uh, that's all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.